Welcome back to Dell Technologies Making AI Real with Data. On theCUBE, I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with theCUBE Research, back with you to really dive into this really interesting area because really in this segment, we're going to start to unpack why storage architectures are crucial to AI. And this should come as common sense because data powers AI. And really, I'm excited about this segment because to help me unpack this, I'm joined by Elizabeth Carbone, who's the Senior Consultant, Product Marketing, Unstructured Data Storage at Dell Technologies. Martin Glynn, who's the Senior Director of Product Management, Unstructured Data Solutions at Dell Technologies. And Vrashank Jain, who's the Senior Consultant, Product Management, Data Management, Dell Technologies. Welcome on board, everybody. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. This is, yeah, I mean, I, again, there, I don't think you can have a, a, a conversation today about AI and not be talking about these topics of data management and storage and what powers those architectures. So help us understand, you know, what are you hearing from customers when it comes to data management and what is most important to them right now? And Elizabeth, why don't, you, why don't we start off with you? Yes, thank you so much for having me. So you you hit the nail on the head. I think everybody is super focused on their data strategy, you know, in every single vertical. I don't think anything anybody's left out. And I think that's just magnified when it comes to AI. You know, we we talk to customers, they're identifying hundreds of different use cases, but it really comes down what we're hearing a lot of is, you know, focusing on quality uh, to make sure that our AI models are as accurate as possible. At Dell, you know, we're focused on making sure that customers have visibility over their data, that they can they can tag it properly so they can you know train their AI models in the most effective way possible. Yeah, and Vrashank, why don't you jump in here? Because like, again, this you got data management in your title. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I know we've, we've talked about this before, so this would be good to understand where, where, where do you see this and what are you hearing from customers? Most of these conversations that we're having with customers, say for a couple of hours, we tend to spend about 80% of that time actually talking about the state of their data architecture. And it's really starting to highlight a couple of areas of, uh, of, areas of improvement. Um, I'll, I'll talk about two of them here. Number one is we know brag is becoming pretty much the dominant use case in the enterprise. But it's not just about creating, being able to create vector embeddings and store them in a vector database. It's about discovering the unstructured data that you have across your landscape being able to parse some of those complex data types, being able to find where that is with a ton of metadata around it. Um, and I think that's becoming the secret sauce, right? So um, the better you do that at the beginning before you're even in the embedding step, the, the better results you're likely going to have in that RAG pipeline. Um, and the second thing is, um, I think in the initial Gen AI craze, suddenly we thought the old structured data side of the world became also old. Um, and I think what enterprises are now starting to realize that is a very high value data set because we've spent years and tons of dollars of investment in refining it. We want to bring that into the generative AI fold and we want to start asking questions to that data. So I think it's, a, it's not just an unstructured, it's not just a PDF and a document world, it's becoming all of your data across your enterprise. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that when you start to look at what people are doing with metadata and data and vector databases and you can call it vector search or what have you in, in there, it really is coming together. I think now one of the things though is, and this is to the two of you, is that people look at Dell as kind of an infrastructure company and really, you know, you've been known for that for years. What role are you stepping up into to really help in that data management space because people may not really think of you that way. So Vershawn, for given you have data management in your title, let's start with yeah. you about that. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a good question. Um, and it, it, for, I think for the last um, you know, eight to nine months, I think we've been trying to position ourselves more in the data management space, not just as a storage or a server or a, or a PC vendor. Um, and to that end, we've, we launched the Dell Data Lakehouse um, in March of this year. And I think the response has been tremendous. Um, and I'll, I'll just give you a, a quick summary of what that is. Uh, the Dell Data Lakehouse is essentially 
um, powered by a really cool piece of technology that comes from our partners at Starburst. Um, some amazing technology that has been incubated and used across internet scale companies for years at this point. But we've taken that technology and it gives us two really cool benefits. One is it's able to federate your query, which means you can go and access and process data regardless of location, no matter where it's stored. So all of your data silos now are certainly connected. And the second thing it does really well is it's able to query data very in a really high-performing manner on top of your data lake directly. So you really have the best of both worlds, you know, data being all over the place, but also some high-value data sets in your data lake on an S3 storage. Um, the whole lake house is built on open technologies. We've made significant improvements in that product already. We launched a very cool thing called Warp Speed back in July where we really turned the dial up on performance um, with indexing and caching. So we're really excited about all of these new announcements. I think this is starting to position us as not just a storage company, but really as a data company. Yeah. Martin, what about from your side of the fence? You guys, I know, work very closely together, so this... this yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> what Frank just went through is really, really cool technology, and all the customers we show to love it. And what they want to uh, do in particular when it comes to Dell infrastructure is sort of marry all of the ability that Rashant just went through um, with some of their largest unstructured data sets where they're seeing an explosion of data growth um, and a need to understand what they have so then they can take advantage of it and use it for you know these new generative, generative AI use cases that they're also interested in. So that's where we're going to talk today about marrying the capabilities that, that we have in our, in our Dell Data Lake House and the way it's built with the huge set of capabilities that PowerScale has and what it brings to the table in terms of ingesting enormous amounts of data, um, being able to manage enormous amounts of data, and now being able to query against the metadata that surrounds that data so you can get real insights into where you can have an impact on your, your new generative AI applications. Vershank, back to you. What are some of the exciting uh, announcements that you see, or where, where's the roadmap for this going, and what do you see as the next set of innovations? I want to talk to you about a couple of things. It's really, really exciting. Um, number one, you know, we talked about Starburst and the Trino engine, but we know a lot of enterprises are using Spark um, in their environments for both batch and real-time pipelines. Um, so the first thing we're doing is we're, we're enabling interoperability, right? Our, our mantra, our ethos with the lake house is we want to partner, we want to work with whatever the customers have and never have any lock-in anywhere. So the first thing we're doing is we're making Spark interoperable with our lake house, which means you can use your Spark engine to both ingest into our lake house as well as read data that's in the lake house you know, with your engine. The second piece is we talked about Iceberg being the open format of choice. Um, and we're, we're taking that one step further. So uh, again, along with our partners at Starburst, we're introducing this concept of an ice house. And an ice house is really just a data lake house where Iceberg is a first class citizen. That means being able to both continuously ingest data into Iceberg to finally help people modernize to the latest format. And then finally, we're also working with our partners at NVIDIA um, and helping customers integrate their latest announcements, for example, Nemo Retriever um, on top of our storage and, and, then put, and then eventually integrated with our lake house to power both you know, structured and unstructured data to go into RAG pipelines. That makes a lot of sense. And I think that, again, when, when you look at the whole uh, piece together, it, it, it has to live somewhere. So, and funny enough, you have storage. And so Martin, kind of help us tie together what Rashank was talking about with what's going on in storage. I think I'll break it up into a few parts, right? I mean, when you talk about your, your storage platform, you have to start with, do you have the right amount of flexibility built in, right? Can you achieve the different capacity and performance points? And power scale has proven over and over again, um, it can start really small. Three nodes, tens of terabytes can go to hundreds of nodes and hundreds of, hundreds of petabytes. We're really the only you know, vendor who's proven that at scale with lots of really big demanding customers. And so we continue to expand on that and make it more flexible and offer new levels of performance so, uh, and capacity and density. So early, earlier this year, we launched our new all-flash nodes 
which were a breakthrough from a performance perspective. Now we're expanding on that. We're about to launch 200 gig front end Ethernet on, the, on these new nodes, which increases performance dramatically beyond, beyond where we were. We're also going to add front end InfiniBand, which opens up a whole new class of infrastructure. Uh, we've used InfiniBand on the back end of the system for years. Now you can actually connect from the front end, which there's, there's been sort of a, a renaissance for InfiniBand you know, with, uh, with the, the advent of generative AI in the last you know, 18 to 24 months. So we've seen a lot of demand from our customers to say, I really want to be able to use PowerScale with all of its strengths over here in my InfiniBand infrastructure as well. So we're adding both those things. And that's really just the beginning from a performance perspective. We're pushing the envelope all the time. We feel really good about what we're able to offer our customers you know, from a hardware perspective. And of course, not just the performance, but also the density. So, you know, we've, oh, we've had 30 terabyte drives in our systems for years. Now we've added now 61 terabyte drives. We'll be putting that in our 910 infrastructure um, just in the next couple months, which really um, provides customers the best in class density and performance combination and flexibility, starting small, growing very, very large. So um, PowerScale as, as a storage platform, you know, hands down offers, you know, the best set of capabilities. Um, building on that, we also extended the platform so that you could run it in the cloud, right? So just in the past 18 months, we've offered now the ability to run PowerScale inside AWS and inside Azure. You're going to see more from us there. And what customers are really excited about there from a generative AI perspective is um, there are some tool sets you can only access in the cloud. So now they have this platform that they've come to love uh, and deploy at scale inside their own data centers. They want to take advantage of tool sets inside the cloud. They can easily move the data back and forth, take advantage of it uh, in the cloud. You'll see a lot more from us in the very near future on that, so, so stay tuned. Um, and then I'd say the, the third piece of our, of our vision here is now you've got these systems that are growing larger and larger. I mean, we have you know, 100 petabyte plus customers. We're dealing with exabyte sized uh, deals and environments. And when you get to these scale points and the amount of data that's being created, you really have to have sophisticated tools to be able to discover the data you have, um, you know, ultimately process it and produce new interesting outcomes and applications. And so Vershank went through beautifully all the set of capabilities we have from a data management perspective. Now we have to connect the platforms, right? And give you the ability to uh, query and discover against all that metadata inside PowerScale, which is what we're going to release in the next uh, couple months. And I think it's really important on this point to emphasize the way we see customers wanting to take advantage of all the data in, these, in, in their PowerScale platform. And that's with choice and flexibility and an open infrastructure. They want to be able to use the tool sets that they're comfortable with and that are changing rapidly in this new generative AI world. They don't want to be locked into a specific way to query a system or have to do something on a specific system. They want to be able to do it you know, outside the system. So what we're building uh, is the ability to plug your power scale metadata into the rest of your data pipeline, whether it's AI data pipeline, which is one top of mind for most customers these days, but across all the different use cases we work with our customers today. I think that makes a lot of sense in the, in the perspective of all of these pieces coming together. And I think, you know, you have to, you, you know, we see this because for customers to get real value out of it, it has to knit together not just the software parts and pieces, you want it as a solution that all works in the same way. Speaking about the solution approach, I think one of the things that I get very excited about working at Dell and, and working and partnering with NVIDIA is that we actually create the validated designs, the blueprints to make this all a reality that takes hundreds of hours of testing, you know, the, the tried and tested stack that you need to run these, you know, very important Gen AI use cases. I think it's, it's important to note that we give you the blueprint as well through our validated designs and, and working very closely with NVIDIA. To that extent, uh, Elizabeth, why don't you kind of help us understand because Dell has been that in infrastructure go-to company for so, so much time, how do you really transition to being that trust and earning that trust to become that strategic data management advisor back to those companies now? Absolutely, and you know, I think that data management to us is not just a technology choice, it's about people and process as well. Um, and so we do have consulting services to help people along this journey. You know, people are different stages of the, their Gen AI or AI journey. And so what we want to do is help them wherever they are, in that journey. So 
you know, we've added new capabilities and we're announcing today new uh, data discovery, cataloging, pipeline orchestration services. So, you know, you can work with our subject matter experts to make sure that you're using your data and you're leveraging your data in every way possible to power these use cases. So that's number one. Outside of consulting services, though, I think one of the hidden secrets, and it might not be a hidden secret, but it's something that I'm very passionate about, is that we have vertical industry experts within Dell that can actually talk your data language. So like, for example, media and entertainment and, you know, genomics, like I mentioned, digital pathology, all of these verticals have unique applications, unique workflows that they need to think about when, you know, using their data for these Gen AI use cases. And so I think one of the what I'm really proud of is that Dell has, you know, the vertical experts that you need to talk your data, to talk your language and walk through what that strategy should look like for your business. Um, and I think that's a real differentiator for us. Absolutely. I, I, let's leave it there. It's It's been great. Thank you, Elizabeth Martin and Vershank for coming on board today. I think this conversation is one that we will, I know we will continue. Uh, so. For those of you who are watching, stay tuned for more Making AI Real with Data on theCUBE, the leader in high-tech enterprise news and analysis. Stay tuned.